All right, guys, I made the terrible decision of trying to do some cardio in 2018. I regret it instantly, but I want to start off this video because I'm going to be talking about basically the difference between a doctor and a dentist. And I understand clearly that a dentist is a doctor. Let me tell you, I believe in that full heartedly. But a lot of people out there, they just make the distinction. Doctor has an MD behind their name and a dentist is a uh, DDS or DMD. So I'm going to be talking about the differences between the path to get to medical school and the path to get to dental school and then also the differences between the lifestyles after school. So what kind of schedule you're going to be living as a doctor, as an MD doctor and what kind of schedule and hours you'll be living when you are a dentist. Alright, I'm about two and a half miles deep trying to get to three. I instantly regret this. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm too old for this. Alright, before we get this breakdown started, I wanted to let you guys know that I finally got an Instagram up and running. It is Trevor West DDS. Search that on Instagram. Give me a follow. I'll be able to update you guys on kind of the daily grind of school. So I'll be posting stories and pictures of what's happening in class and mostly lab because that's the most interesting thing actually working on my hand skills. So right now we're working on provisionals, crown preps, uh, cavity preps, filling those cavity preps. So we're doing composites right now, all the different types of classes. So follow me on Instagram to be kept up to date with what is happening on the day to day grind of school. Let's get this comparison started and I've actually done a ton of research for this, probably more than any other video I've made and that's because I know my videos aren't that funny, I'm not that entertaining, so I want to give some type of value to the new people that come across my channel or my old subscribers. So I've put in a lot of numbers in this next section and I'll try to break them down on screen for you guys so you can see and relate them to kind of the big picture of what I'm talking about and you can get a real sense of the different paths between medical school and dental school. And let's get it started with talking about medical school. Now for the 2016 to 2017 application cycle for all the medical schools across the United States, we had 53,000 applicants and of those 53,000, only 21,000 matriculated into medical school or got in and enrolled for their first year. And that works out to be roughly about 40%. Now remember that 40% and we'll compare it to the percentage that get into dental school that apply. Now going back to that 53,000, that is actually 6% higher than it was for the year before. So if this trend keeps continuing, medical school is going to get tougher and tougher to get into solely based on the numbers. And the average overall GPA of those 21,000 that got accepted into medical school for that cycle was a 3.71. Now let's get into the numbers for dental school and compare that to what we just talked about. Now for that same cycle, 2016 to 2017, we had about 12,000 applicants, total applicants for all of the dental schools across the United States. And of those 12,000, about 6,000 of them matriculated or got in and were enrolled into their first year. So that equals about 50%. And if we compare that to how many of the total applicants got into med school, which was 40%, there is a 10% difference. That means you have a much better chance solely based off of numbers getting into dental school. And that's not to mention that there are about six times as many applicants total that are applying to med school. So you're competing with a lot smaller applicant pool if you're choosing to go to dental school. For those 6,000 applicants that were actually accepted into dental school for that cycle, the average GPA was a 355, which is a whole 0.16 lower GPA overall than the average acceptance rate into medical school. So there's a huge gap right there as well. Now I know there are a ton more variables that I'm not even considering when I'm comparing the difficulty to get into med school and dental school, but solely based off the numbers, as we've seen here, it is much more difficult to get into medical school. Now the next topic that we are going to discuss, which has to do with getting into each of these schools, is the enormous test that you have to take for each one. The MCAT for medical school and the DAT for dental school. The MCAT is a gigantic test. Just length alone, it is seven and a half hours. Good night, I am so glad I did not have to take that. And it covers five basic sciences, so that's general chemistry, organic chemistry, biology, biochem, and physics. Two social sciences, which is psychology and sociology, and then a reading comprehension section. 
Now, when we compare that to the DAT, we are looking at a much shorter test with a little bit different sections on it. It's only four hours and 15 minutes long. Tests on three basic sciences, so general chemistry, organic chemistry, and biology. There's a PAT portion, which is the perceptual abilities test, which deals with spatial awareness. So you're trying to orient 3D objects in your mind, which can be very difficult unless you practice a bunch on it. And then it's actually kind of fun. There's also a reading comprehension section and a QR section, which is quantitative reasoning or math. Now, I don't have any personal experience with taking the MCAT, but obviously I took the DAT when I had to apply. And just from personal experience, this isn't factual at all. I personally believe that the MCAT is a much more broad test that would be more time consuming and more difficult to study for. So I think between the two, both are very difficult tests. The DAT was the hardest test hands down that I've ever had to take in my life but I do believe that it is a little bit easier than the MCAT would have been. Our next topic is going to be about costs, so the financial aspects of each school. And before we get into these numbers, I just wanna say that there are there's a huge possibility that these numbers are skewed because there's a lot of po politics that go into reporting the financial aspects of both institutions, medical school and dental school. Uh, I don't want to get into that, but these are the numbers that the internet puts out. So I would say trust them with a grain of salt, but this is the best information that we have. The average debt of a recent graduate from medical school is right around 190000 And if we compare that to a graduate of dental school, that is going to jump all the way up to 287000 So that is a huge jump, and that's what they say are is the average amount of debt. And let me tell you, from personal experience, I'm going to be well above that $287,000 when I graduate. So we can see that medical school is actually a lot cheaper than dental school on average if we actually trust these numbers that the internet gives us. All right, that wraps up the comparison of the schools for each, so medical school versus dental school. Now let's talk about lifestyle after you graduate. And we're gonna start off with medical school because you can't actually go straight from medical school and begin practicing. You have to do what is something that is called a residency. I'm sure almost all of you know what that is but it can range from two to five years depending on what specialty you go into. And these residencies are notorious for honestly being pure hell. I've, uh, I have some family members that have gone through it and I have heard horror stories about how difficult it is. And the IOM or the Institute of Medicine actually has a recommendation for these 30 hour shifts that a lot of the residents are on that between the hours of 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. they recommend strategic napping in order to function as a human being and treat patients that are oftentimes in life-threatening situations. To me, that is absurd. I mean, I know a lot of people do. I'm not knocking the medical profession at all. They are some of the most brilliant individuals on the planet, but that is just something that seems so over the top insane to me. And the main reason or justification, I should say, for the, those extremely long hours is that they want to pack that two to five years of residency full of as much experience for these doctors in training as possible. And that kind of makes sense. You know, if someone is in charge of literally saving lives. You want them to be as well trained as possible when they go out in the real world and they are the head honcho, they're the ones controlling um, a dangerous situation. But again, I just think that is insane. Those hours are wild. It's not something that I personally would ever want to do. Now, after those crazy years of residency, life does get better for doctors when they enter into you know, actual practice, working for a hospital or a private practice. The average work week actually drops down to about 60 hours, which is still one and a half times the normal work week for Americans. One extra aspect of being a doctor is that many of these specialties require you to be on call. So that is gonna be, I think on average, around a 30 hour shift where you have to either be in the hospital or you can be at home, but you have to be available to go into the hospital at any moment for that entire 30 hour shift if uh, an emergency requires your attention because you are going to be kind of the last level of um, leadership in a team that is working to save someone's life. Now, I'm not trying to be biased, but clearly just based off of work hours and 
probably work stress. It seems like medicine in general is much more difficult and strenuous than dental. So let's start talking about what happens after you graduate dental school and you start practicing as a dentist. So after the four years of dental school, you can go straight into private practice or you can actually choose to do a residency. There are numerous specialties that you can go into, but it is not required unlike medical school. So if you decide to go straight into practice after you graduate dental school, the average work week from all the numbers that I found is about 36 hours per week. So you are actually working less hours than the average American. And dentists are almost never on call. I mean, you there are certain situations that are deemed emergencies, but overall it's very rare that you will ever be on call as a dentist. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is the money. And a lot of people get into both of these professions solely based on the potential income that there is out there if you get into the right subspecialty. And it definitely can be a lot, but let's go with the numbers that are on the internet and the averages that they give. So if you are a practicing doctor, the average salary is 189,000, while if you are a practicing dentist, the average is 154,000. So just based off of those numbers, the more stressful lifestyle that doctors live is rewarded with a much higher salary. But from my experience, these numbers are definitely, definitely lowballing what actual private practice doctors and dentists are making out there. And one reason is because these numbers are based off of salaried doctors, which are required to report their earnings, but many, many private practice doctors do not actually have to submit their earnings. So those numbers are not reflecting some of those top, top earners in both categories. Because I personally know a lot of dentists and a few doctors that make a lot more than both of those numbers. All right, that wraps up our comparison of doctors versus dentists, which is funny because both of them are actually doctors, but a lot of people kind of don't realize and they call people who work in a hospital doctors and people who work in an office a dentist. At the end of the day, I think both professions are amazing. Both are helping improve lives tremendously. I think you are going to be happy in either one. It just kind of depends on what your personality is and kind of how you want to live your life. If you can handle the more high stress hospital life, I think medicine is right for you. Or if you enjoy being more of your own boss or being an entrepreneur and having to deal with um, a lot of the business and insurance side of healthcare, then going into dentistry might be what is for you. But I'm not the one that needs to decide that. I just wanted to give you guys some facts in case you you were trying to decide between the two. So I hope you guys liked the video. Um, comment down below if you have any questions about anything. I'll do my best to research questions that I haven't addressed and get back to you. But I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.